Okay, I think we could start. Um, ladies and gent gentlemen, uh, welcome to this uh, Oratorium Marianum Hall of the University of Wrocław. My name is Marcin Dębicki, uh, and this is a great honor and pleasure for me to invite you to participate uh, in the symposium called The Sociology in Central and Eastern Europe. The symposium is organized, apart from me, with my colleague, uh, Irena Wolska-Zogata. Uh, we both represent the same uh, Institute of Sociology, University of Wrocław. Now let me introduce our dear and respectful guests, um, speakers of the symposium who agreed to come over to Wrocław and share their knowledge uh, on the sociologies in their uh, countries. Uh, let me start from Professor Elena Danilova, uh, who represents, as you can see, Institute of Sociology, Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, by the way, excuse me for the mistake in the program because a professor's affiliation in the program is different and that's our mistake. So the proper affiliation is on the screen, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, Professor Zuzana Kusa, who, repre who represents uh, Slovak Academy of Sciences. Uh, Professor Vil Bakirov, um, who is the head of the Ukrainian Sociological Association. And uh, then we have Professor Lyutaura Skraniauskaus, University of Klaipeda, member of the board of the Lithuanian Sociological Association. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in Poland, we are on the eve of a big reform of uh, science and higher education to be implemented. Um, that's why we believe uh, the lectures we are going to hear may help us to understand the whole thing in the broader Central, e Central Eastern European context and maybe it will help us to embed our Polish sociology within this context to see uh, what problems are common, which things are different, uh, and maybe we'll try to find out something peculiar about the sociologies in our region, in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, finally, not to make it too long, this introduction, let me uh, say, let me give you three technical remarks. Uh, the first one, our speakers, our guests will have uh, 20 minutes each. Uh, afterwards, we'll have some time for questions and discussion, so of course, I hope we'll have a kind of dialogue or conversation here. Right after our symp symposium, uh, we'll have a chance uh, to see a bit more of the university building. Uh, so right afterwards, uh, His Magnificence, Rector of the University of Wrocław, Professor Adam Jezierski himself, uh, will take us for a walk around the most representative, the most, I would say, attractive uh, halls and uh, spaces of the university. So all are welcomed. Uh, the walk will take approximately 45 minutes and will be in English. After the walk, uh, we'll have another walk uh, to another uh, venue of the Congress, uh, the Congress Club called Mleczarnia, uh, which is just across the market square. It will also be guided. So we'll have a guide, it will also be guided in English, and it will also take approximately 45 minutes. So again, uh, everyone is welcome. Um, the walk with, uh, with the rector will start, as I said, right after the symposium. So people interested in it uh, are invited just to join me after, the, uh, after our, our symposium. 
Okay, I think that's more or less enough. Uh, now let's uh, listen to our respectful guests. Um, we'll start from uh, Professor Vil Bakirov uh, with his speech, um, Sociology in Ukraine, Current Research Agenda. Professor, the floor is yours. about the uh, institutional landscape of our uh, sociology. Ukrainian sociologists uh, came out in a new way of sociology for, for support and also for uh, it was created uh, in, 19, uh, in 1990 and since 1992 he has been a member of the International Sociological Association as uh, Europe uh, European Sociological uh, Association, Association as well. At the moment, uh, TAU consists of 17 regional branches, practically in all major university centers. We have more than 1,300 uh, 1, individuals and 25 collective members. Uh, and since uh, 2007, the Sociological Association of Ukraine. Pause, okay. okay. Uh, and since uh, 2007, uh, the Sociological Association of Ukraine has been based in Kharkiv. And uh, we have here um, a, little, a small but very serious delegation with uh, the Vice President of the Association, Professor Sukorensky and Dr. Kizhnyak. In this slide, uh, you can see the uh, internet uh, Yes, <laughs> site of our uh, association, you can find it in the internet, of course. Uh, Ukrainian uh, sociologist uh, recent years focuses primarily uh, on the problems of the post-Soviet transformation, social transformation, uh, classes and social institutions, middle class, uh, gender, feminism, civil society, social inequality, uh, that's the problems which uh, we have studied in uh, recent years. Uh, of course, uh, analysis of media, social and uh, mass communications, and their influence uh, on people uh, are uh, interesting us also. For uh, the several years, the agenda of the Ukrainian sociology has been supplemented with uh, such problems as external and internal migration, problem of IDPs, modern war conflicts, occupied territories and their reintegration, etc. The beginning of the military conflict in the east of Ukraine, we've had to study a new social phenomenon for Ukraine, internally displaced persons. These people who fled their homes due to the military action, actions or social uh, and political conflicts. And uh, so far we've studied not only different aspects of this phenomenon, but also the ways to help IDPs fit into the new conditions. Uh, some representation, some representation about Ukrainian uh, sociology research interest uh, gives uh, give uh, the titles of. Uh, uh, three international congresses held in recent years. In uh, 2009, it was the first Congress, 
sociology in the situation of social uncertainties. In 2013, it was the second Congress, Sociology and Society Collaboration in Crisis. And in 2017, it was the third Congress, New Inequalities, New Conflicts, Ways to Overcome. During these Congresses, we had great discussions on many sociological problems of modern Ukraine, our neighbors, and future of the world. More than 2,500 sociologists participated in this three Congress. Uh, by the way, many of Polish uh, colleagues participated at these con meetings as well. Now uh, we are going to hold the next Congress in 2021. It will be dedicated uh, to the transformation of social institutes in a digital uh, society. Ukrainian sociologists participate in many international projects, those with Polish colleagues. I have no time to mention all of them, but um, give only one um, example, good example. That's the research project, uh, Students on the Bodylands of Central and Eastern Europe, Identities, Values, Life Plans. Leaders from Polish uh, side, Professor Zelinska, University of uh, Zelenogora, and from Ukraine, Professor Lyudmila Sokoryanska, she's present at this uh, uh, meeting. In order to present the most interesting results of our research last year, we published in English the collective monograph Ukrainian Sociology in the 21st Century, Theory, Method, Methods, Research, Results. In this work, uh, you can find uh, all the main issues that Ukrainian sociologist focuses on. We brought uh, several copies of this uh, uh, book. I <laughs> can give uh, them to our speakers. And uh, you can also find uh, this uh, monograph in electronic version on, at our uh, internet uh, site. Uh, dear uh, colleagues, sociologists trying to reflect uh, the society within which it exists. Uh, the sociological agenda is determined by the state of society, of course. This summer, Ukrainian society entered a period of completely unexpected and large-scale transformations. Before our eyes, post-Soviet political architectonics, which existed for about 30 years, is being destroyed, and something is happening to society. What exactly is uh, uh, hard to say. Uh, President uh, Poroshenko, in the presidential uh, election in April this year, s had suffered a crushing defeat. He was beaten by an absolute beginner in politics, namely artist, comedian, TV star, Vladimir Zelensky, who got the support of 73% of voters. Analytics thought that in the forthcoming parliamentary elections, his party, party of Zelensky, servant of people, servant of the people, which had recently been registered, and strictly speaking mm, is not a party, of course, would not gain the most uh, votes, and maybe thanks to new president's lack of experience, the center of political influence would move to the parliament and to the government, and Ukraine shift strongly towards strengthening parliamentary presidential form of government. But there were a second surprise. Servant of the people received huge voter support and accordingly 254 seats in parliament from 450. This allowed her to create a new government on her own. Old political elites were instantly swept away thrown overboard of real politics. All the fullness of power 
in the country due to the huge popularity of the new president fell into the hands of very young, mostly unexperienced politicians, Ukraine did not know before such huge concentration of power in one hands. Instead of parliamentary presidential republic by the constitution, the country has de facto become a presidential or as they say, even a super presidential republic. What made people of all ages forget about the original, mental, ethnic, cultural, and other differences and vote similarly in practically all Ukrainian regions? This is a big question for sociology. And I believe that the sociological agenda in Ukraine will be formed under the great influence of this issue. Laying no claim on absolutely correct analysis and corresponding judgments, I'll let myself express some preliminary considerations um, on the basis of the sociological research. The 2014 presidential elections, last elections, was held immediately after Maidan. Protests of hundreds and thousands of people during which more than a hundred people were shot dead in the governmental district in Kiev. And then the then president Viktor Yanukovych fled to Russia. This protest was provoked by a feeling of deep indignation, uh, indignation about authorities who violated human rights and freedoms behaved in a rude and uh, shameless manner. Those events were later called the revolution of dignity. In, in the spring of uh, 2014, Ukrainians had several important expectations that were instigated by the revolution of dignity and war. Unfortunately, none of them came true. Moreover, with time, these expectations transformed into five huge disappointments, which fact is supported by many sociological research. Disappointment why? One, war conflict was not stopped. According to all sociological surveys, peace is Ukrainian's number one priority. This slide shows that, but I don't ha not have had time to comment it. Uh, disappointment two, living standards haven't improved. People understood that the war required some sacrifice and were ready to grin and bear it. But now, five years later, they see no real perspective for any improvement. They are dissatisfied with low income, high prices, and the lack of proper conditions for doing business. Disappointment three, after the revolution of dignity, despite its big name, the society didn't feel more dignified. Large-scale corruption involving a lot of representatives of ruling elite is still plaguing the country. These figures support my uh, statement. Disappointment four, people in Maidan fought against outrageous social and the property inequality, and yet today the rich are even richer and the poor poorer. Forgive me, but I'm mm, not able to, to, to mm, illustrate these uh, uh, positions with figures on these uh, slides. Disappointment five, inconsistency and inefficiency of proclaimed reforms. The government declared about some serious reforms directed at transformation of the major social institutions, court reform, law enforcement reform, medical reform, education reform, and so on. Basically, none of them yielded any decent results. All these frustrations resulted in mass protest voting at the presidential election. People, people voted not so much for a new candidate as against the old one who in their eyes embodied the power they didn't meet their expectations and disappointed them. 
the voters faces the choice, Ukrainian voters faces the choice whether to prolong post-Soviet neo-patrimonial status quo, threatening to never end, or to make a step towards new risks, uncertainty, and unpredictability, but with some, some chance for change, for radical reformation of power, and all this despite the military confrontation with Russia. Uh, time is limited. Uh, I see, I understand. Uh, let me uh, end with this two conclusions which uh, mm -hmm, I can uh, give you. Uh, the revenge of pro-Russian forces and Ukraine's return to the orbit of Russian political and economic influence are very unlikely, if possible at all. A new generation of people has emerged with new, modern, post-materialistic, as they say, views, who reject the social model demonstrated by Russia who could see and estimate Western standards of social organization with their own eyes. Conclusion two, it's also very unlikely that the Ukrainian society will lock itself in the shell of traditional nationalism, whose proponents are few and concentrated in several Western regions of Ukraine. Uh, and uh, dear friends, uh, the last mm, 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 saying. Uh, speedy integration of new and new segments of Ukrainian society into the realm of internet, involvement with new media, mass character of higher education and general growth of uh, the population's educational level give hope for a more and more active formation of a new political culture, for a more mature civil society, and finally for a replacement of political elites. The situation de depicted above is very unstable and very uh, dynamic. It will be changing rapidly and in an expected way. Ukrainian society found themselves in a real bifurcation point bifurcation point. And that is very interesting for sociologists, and that will be inspiring Ukrainian sociologists for developing the research agenda in the nearest future. My <laughs> time is finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, now I'd like to ask uh, our second speaker, Professor Elena Danilova, who will tell us about sociological turns in the studies of Russian transformations, discourses and reality. Hello, dear colleagues, and uh, it is really, really big honor to have a speech in such a magnificent, you know, building and hall, and especially uh, with this sort of trying to find, to find how sociology may help humanity, maybe, how to, you know, this kind of uh, thoughts come to my mind because we are sort of magnificent, say. But anyway, we have to talk about problems and uh, issues which could arise from our sociological study and reflections of the history, uh, what we actually passed through uh, 20th century in Russia and the beginning of the 21st century. So my presentation will be also stick 
to the whole title of the conference, I will be, you know, trying to generalize a bit about what is sociology uh, in Russian society, how it developed, what was the main, uh, let's say, ontological visions of the society, and briefly just say something about the previous uh, periods of Russian sociology, Soviet sociology, which you know, of course, as mm, as we all, you know, what there was the exchange and so on. And I uh, will focus mostly on the recent one, and also I will have uh, to make some political implications of what we are doing in social genes, how we can analyze the, uh, you know, challenges of contemporary world. So it may seem that the Russians, Russia is a kind of specific country, uh, and to some extent we all are specific countries, but uh, in my point I would like to argue that that is not that specific it may, as it may seem, uh, in especially in contemporary era. Uh, I'm not saying about political things, now I'm saying about sociology. So, um, let me first just to remind you uh, that the whole sociology in Russia started in, uh, uh, let's say, in 19th century. It was Russian sociology uh, in the Tsarist period, and uh, uh, then it uh, becomes uh, more prominent in the beginning of 20th century. And you may, of course, uh, we, we have kn to know that there are different, you know, um, camps of the Russian sociology, as well as a, a sort of uh, ideological camps of Slavophiles and Westernizers. This is all have deep roots in, in, in uh, our sociology today as well. You may know, of course, uh, Peter Im Sarokin, who was, uh, you know, pushed away in 1922 with the other uh, intellectuals. Uh, you may know Kovalevsky, who is the first Russian Department of Sociology in Paris. So there is a kind of uh, core established in sociology in pre-revolutionary time and during the revolution and just pre-Stalin's Stalin, uh, time. As you know, and we all know that uh, in Stalin periods, uh, sociology was forbidden. There was no uh, such a discipline in the university and also the reflections upon society was done within the kind of philosophical or you know, historical materialism and Marxist, uh, this uh, m Marxist model of uh, 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 Russian orthodoxy, Russian Marxist orthodoxy. Even uh, uh, the, the, the links with the Frankfurt School uh, didn't influence a sort of critical approach of the Russian sociology at that time. So that's why I will start just briefly saying just a few words about Soviet period because uh, this is the starting point of my reflection of sociology. So uh, sociology at that time was a kind of, uh, you know, established as an academic discipline within many, many struggles of establishing institution. So my own institution was established in 60s and 19, 1968. And there were before, there were some uh, 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 many debates how to establish sociology within kind of, wi what in, within what kind of reference, frame of references, so on and so forth. And I think it is for Polish sociologists, it's very, very, similar. We had many struggles uh, and also, uh, I mean, each time in 1960, in 1968 after Czech uh, uh, so, uh, I I events, there was uh, an oppression of sociology on, uh, on sociology in 1982, uh, 80, even in 84 there was again a uh, kind of oppression because, you know, sociology has a task which is uh, already, you can see on the screen, of kind of administrative management and fulfilling this role of belt between population and authority. And 
Uh, but I have to say here and underline this fact that Russian sociology was not Marxist one, even though it was under the roof of sort of Marxist orthodoxy. In terms of you know, empirical research approaches, it was exactly a functionalist approach. And as you know, Merton, Parsons, Aaron uh, were visiting Russia, the Soviet Union, uh, were acquainted with, uh, with Russian colleagues and uh, uh, you know, this generation of 60s uh, uh, talked to them personally, so this was a kind of uh, area. And the, the, the idea of sociology of that time, anyway, was a kind of modernization pro uh, project which could be efficiently implemented in the USSR. So the uh, idea and ontology of sociology was a complete structural and positivist because we have to know what we are doing, we have to control, we have to predict all these kind of things we know. So it was implemented in the uh, uh, in sort of a research agenda and research methodology and tools. And of course the main uh, uh, areas of sociology was uh, quite common. We have all social structure, institutions, uh, 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 institutions and unfortunately here we can't see, uh, okay, and uh, other things uh, which is quite similar. So uh, here I would like to point that we really see the uh, uh, picture of the society as a structural thing which could be somehow managed. Uh, agency was not at that time as a popular thing and all phenomenological, I mean, uh, all Western theory was a, a kind of area of sociology where uh, colleagues trying to be critical towards them but it was a hidden area for developing soci theory of sociology as such. So this is hidden territory in which sort of reflections on the Western theory was produced. But the mainstream, and I'm mostly talking about mainstream because it will be, other otherwise it will be too complicated to talk about um, uh, many things uh, in uh, uh, sociology. Uh, so, as you know, sociology is really, really contestable. So it is really connected with a political agenda and political context. Moreover, I must say that inside sociological and intellectual community, the ideas of perestroika emerged, and there are many, many, and in this time, Russia was ahead of the other uh, Eastern European countries in terms of how to rearrange society to the, not completely to the capitalism, but maybe introducing, more, there are many debates. And actually the most liberal, uh, liberal ideas cr comes from economists and sociologists uh, of the journal communist. That was a mm, sort of state organ communist. That was a uh, ideas uh, that was broadly um, debateful and bro bro debated. And uh, and here we have um, a, the, a massive critique of the existing existing system, which had uh, we, which at that period was in stagnation. So actually, we need changes, and we. Uh, Actually, we may say that many of sociologists participated in these changes. Uh, you may have, no, you may know Professor Saslavsky, uh, Professor Yadov, Professor Slivada, this, uh, I mean, I'm talking about prominent sociologists who really uh, contribute to the idea of the better society which ca can, derive from, so can derive from the oldest system. So what is changing in the milieu of sociology? Sociology was established as a discipline. Sociology has different, I mean, there are many departments would open, uh, many projects, projects, uh, bigger projects, smaller projects. So uh, the discourses contains a lot of uh, liberal things and also uh, 
the idea of deologization. There is no ideology, so uh, uh, and not communist ideology, first of all, the Sovietization <coughs> and <coughs> this kind of ideas inspired people to look uh, for, the, for the future society. However, in sociology, <coughs> uh, agenda of a sort of post, uh, post perestroika and uh, in, uh, in the years of reform was quite similar to what I observed here in Poland, and thank you to Agnieszka, who also have s some similar, similar things. This is uh, about modernization, but the idea of modernization, how to catch up, how to, to, normal, to be normal society, uh, this is what is uh, uh, somehow <coughs> we may see different, uh, you know, actors of these uh, uh, changes. And of course, in these changes, and also the, from a sociological perspective, the notion of agency is introduced and become the most prominent you know, field, of, uh, field of work. Uh, what is agency? Who are active people? So I, I was working with uh, Vladimir Yadov for a long time, and he was a prominent uh, uh, advocate of the agency or activist approaches. <coughs> <coughs> and at that time, and at that time, it was, it seems very relevant. Very le relevant in terms that there are people who may change something, who may participate. So these kind of things were very important. Of course, there are many uh, connections with the Western sociology, translations, curricula. I mean, everything was done, translated, so there was a huge rise of sociology during this time. However, however, is it working? No? Uh, right. So the recent period, which as you can see, could be seen from the late 80s, uh, late 80s, so it started to be somehow reflections. And why this reflection is started? Because, I mean, for one of the reasons that there is definitely, you know, dissatisfaction, as, as my colleague from Ukraine said, this disappointment. The huge disappointments about social inequality, corruption, I mean, all this stuff we have still, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and the deterioration of ec economy, um, having no prospects, uh, it, the huge inequality which for egalitarian society was inadmissible. People have started to have resentments. At the same time, in the intellectual level, people started to find sort of alternatives to modernization project of that time. So the debate was about, it is actually uh, the debate about identity, identity of Russia itself and identity of sociology as well. Uh, so what way we have to go? There are many, of course, many schools, many traditions, and uh, it is a, sort of discussions and uh, camps, as you can imagine, different camps of sociologists and uh, uh, so, so social scientists. And the debates was uh, around sort of basic things, universalism or specificity, should we make so our own specific way, or we are specific civilization with a specific parameters that is uh, uh, you know, once uh, the, uh, uh, the unity and diversity, what about social cohesion, how it's possible to establish social cohesion in so fragmented society, which is uh, contemporary societies everywhere. Uh, and also about sociology as ad hoc, I mean, what is a discipline, what is about, this is, I think, uh, debates which are going on all the time within sociological profession. So it's not, um, so this is kind of uh, trying to 
to elaborate uh, to elaborate the sort of theoretical grounds and uh, ideas how we can find um, different perspectives to look at societies. So there is a paradigmatic uh, um, views, uh, different uh, different uh, theoretical approaches, and uh, this is really. Uh, connected with this idea of profession, with the idea of profession, and also uh, and also uh, 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 nowadays uh, uh, regulation with the universities and academy. So, in this sense, we are very very similar to the rest of the world in terms of administrative pressure, in terms of financial cuts in terms of routine and workload of sociology, of uh, sociologists and teachers, and uh, these kind of things we all know. And, but this somehow reflected in the idea that sociologists, except some of, you know, intellectual um, intell individuals, are making their routine work and also, they are in sort of frame of specific requirements of society, of the model. It's a, uh, I may say it, this is neoliberal model because sociology now is a corporation and, is ru and university is a corporation and ruled as a corporation with all kind of so uh, consequences uh, we may notice everywhere. So. In this sense, there are sort of, uh, you know, uh, reflections about the quality of research, the quality of research, uh, and uh, the gap between the theory and uh, practice. So, anyway, anyway, sociologists somehow feel themselves uh, as, um, as a, as a, as could be, could feel themselves as a part of society with a, with a, uh, which are working in, in sort of uh, specific regulation, which is um, embedded actually in the structures of this regime. And surprisingly, this may call this may call may be called neoliberal regime in Putin's Russia, because it's all go the same way. So at the same time, at the same time, uh, this is um, uh, one thing which I would like to uh, stress. Uh, uh, again, we all understand that, the, that there is a kind of stagnation in society and we have to find the way. And we have to find an agency who is this people? So in our studies, in our studies, I think this is quite common for all, uh, the agency is attributed to elites, businesses, authorities, power, uh, movements, uh, where that is what we may see what is on the surface of our life. We may see protest movements, we may see uh, movement consequences, whatever. And uh, uh, at, the, at the same time, I would like to say that the one moment is missing. We do not attribute agency to ordinary people. It somehow happened that ordinary people who are living absolutely ordinary life, who are in outside of politics, who are, in our surveys, they are uneducated, they have low income, they live in villages and small towns. These kind of categories were always used in survey saying that there is a rest of population without attributing any agency to this kind of population, by the way, which is majority of population. In Russian society, uh, there is a big, I mean, there is a big share of poor people. Big share of poor people. Poverty is one of them. But there are another thing. 
In Russian societies, there is a huge gap, huge inequality gap as well. So, uh, anyway, in the discourses, this is kind of people who we categorize as poor, as has unintended views, whatever, and this course reproduces it. Most of us are looking at this kind of elite uh, or business or power and authority, whatever. And sociologists themselves are interested in this because they provide, uh, provide knowledge for authority, of course, uh, for a public opinion poll, this kind of thing. They uh, classify uh, these uh, uh, things. But the point of agency is missed. And what happened actually, that these ordinary people, uh, in fact, has an agency because they vote. And in this sense, we have surprise. We have surprise in Western democracy and manipulation. And we have manipulation in the Russian society because that what is the part of legacy, part of legis, uh, uh, legitimation of uh, Putin is that he gradually changed his rhetorics and applied to this part of society. In his languages, in his language, in speeches, in, and that makes him justified he has kind of support of these uh, ordinary people. And that's why uh, easy to play game. To play game. We have already, we have, as you know, many of us, we have external agenda and internal agenda. And it's easy to attribute particular things to external agenda to make people uh, think that there is a sort of special time we live to make them cohesive. And also about the internal agenda, there are debates how to, it's more, more, more or less um, mm, more debates, there are different camps, but anyway, there is no measures to reduce inequality. There is no measures to reduce, I mean, there are measures, but, you know, it's all, it's all mm, not that effective as it might be. In this sense, uh, in this sense, so things are left as it, uh, as it is now. And, uh, and this is a kind of uh, thing we, I think we have to think about sociological agenda and what kind of, you know, um, research or uh, ideas uh, uh, could be could be uh, could be done in terms of understanding understanding these ordinary people. There is no big protest in Russia, but it does not mean that people are satisfied. That is a big point, and we have, for example. I have a friend of mine in France, in Paris, I just, yes, just to say some words about yellow jackets, that's people coming into the streets. And they also are quite ordinary people with the sort of. But as we can see, as we can, I, we, see, we saw this during the conference, I saw a very nice slide, that there is no political voice, there is no political party which can sue them. So, the same things could be said about Russia. There is, there is of course, uh, 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 official and oppositional officials uh, system and unsystematic opposition, but the, the, the main thing is mistrust into politics. So we have to know how they live. That is th the end, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we have uh, two interesting presentations, lectures uh, behind us now. There is time for Professor Lyutauras Kraniauskas. Uh, 
with his lecture of a quite intriguing title, Lithuanian Sociology as Production of Contested Knowledge, National Hobbits, Global Wizards, and Administrative Orcs. Please, this, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Martin. Uh, and I would like to express my gratitude to organizers inviting here to share my ideas about sociology. Usually sociologists like to talk about a lot about sociology, so I'm the same like you. And of course, uh, the metaphors of pop culture, which are on the title, are implying just from my point of view, just a normative dimension, uh, but they are trying, how to say, to say where the evil and where the good is lying. But uh, from my point of view, the most important uh, words are adjectives, not nouns. Absolutely no. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, two days ago, I really enjoyed presidential session during this conference because it was just like uh, seeing how uh, uh, seeing a performative space of collective identity where the presidential speeches were trying to produce and reproduce mythologies, main mythologies of sociology. They were talking about the idea of emancipation, discourses about social change, civil society, public sociology, sociology of underdogs, I call, or unprivileged people. They were trying to bring idea of normativity back to sociology and say that you have to always think about your business, what are you doing in normative uh, way. Of course, it is not a joke, what I'm uh, saying, because uh, this uh, uh, ritual performance of professional identity, it could not happen otherwise, because the speeches of presidents who are keeping symbolical power, they're always trying to empower us. It is like in support group of homo sociological anonymous, that you are trying to find motivation, why you're here in, uh, how to say, the society, and what are you doing? Uh, my ideas, uh, which I'm going to present about Lysine and so, uh, sociology, are well grounded in a, a so-called uh, sociology of sociology. It might sound a little bit weird or bizarre, but uh, this idea, which was uh, promoted by Alvin Goldner in his uh, book, uh, The Coming Crisis of Western Sociology, uh, that uh, usually, if you, are, if you are a sociologist, you have to be very reflective about yourself. It means not to give reflections about society, but you have to give also reflections about your ideas, to locate yourself in social situation, and even to say, why are you producing particular kind of discourse? Why are you producing particular kind of ideas? And connect those ideas with the situation in which you are working. It is a first level of reflexivity. And of course, Goldner said, there is even the second and the third uh, level of reflections. I, it is, means that you have to be reflecting your s reflections of yourself. It means stepping up more and more and more. And he said that it is a nightmare of sociological imagination that you always have to position yourself within ideological uh, field. Uh, at the moment, I will leave, uh, how to say, talk about ideology, but I will bring uh, later on, then I will show you some uh, data. Uh, uh, when we are talking about sociology, I think that, uh, of course, uh, like uh, uh, any other social science or any other uh, academical discipline, it is in the field of uh, tensions. And tensions are, how to say, produced by uh, different discourses. Uh, you can say discourse of emancipation, and uh, on the other hand, we have discourse about meaning in the service of power, that you have to rationalize different kind of systems uh, of control. You can say there are sociological studies, how to say, just to get knowledge, but there are labor market demands, etc., etc., etc. And I think that a lot of our, how to say, anxieties are coming from those tensions which are within the field. There are a lot of pragmatical interests. That is, and uh, I think that everybody knows that uh, why you're troubled about particular kind of ideas, but uh, what are your everyday troubles, everyday, how to say, uh, uh, issues which you have uh, to confront uh, with your colleagues. 
In uh, 2012, uh, with my colleague, Alice Gedutis, uh, he's a philosopher, we tried to map uh, social sciences in Lucena. We are doing uh, like a discourse analysis of uh, 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 construction of value in social sciences. We are just trying to find out uh, how people understand doing different kind of uh, research, what is the value, where it lies, how to say, uh, what is valued more. And we mapped uh, social sciences using a uh, Canadian sociologist, uh, 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 Square, uh, uh, it is a Square of Michel Lamont, which distinguished three diff different epistemological styles. It was, qu it was quite easy done for us. We tried to map, uh, of course, sociology lies in more constructivistical mode of thinking, but we also tried to map where tensions are going else in this, uh, how to say, in, in, uh, in this field of social sciences and humanities. Of course, there are epistemological tensions. For example, of course, uh, there are domination uh, coming from uh, natural sciences which are trying to bring to sociology naturalistic approach. Of course, there are more humanistic points of view which are trying to base their research on interpretivist position. But also, we have we, which we, uh, what we call administrative tensions and strengths, which you usually how to see demanded to publish on national level, to produce knowledge for national audience, or produce knowledge or a few messages for international uh, audience. Short uh, historical uh, how to say, excursion to uh, Lucene and sociology in 1997. Uh, in 1997, how to say why I'm talking about 1997? Because uh, the structure, how, so, uh, how sociology was institu institutionalized, it's still having a huge effect how we are understanding and how we are behaving in this field of sociology. In 1997, there were, how to say, two types of institution. Uh, there was uh, one type of institutions which were established in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, they were mainly, how to say, based on a uh, functionalist tradition, about uh, which was mentioned by uh, Elena. It was Institute of Philosophy, Sociology and Law, and also Konas University. They were e usually oriented to making empirical research. And on the other hand, we have universities which started uh, uh, sociology study programs in 1989, how to say, and it's happened that sociological study programs uh, started this national revival movement. And uh, in 1997, I could say there was a real huge divide between those institutions. And those, uh, those, this divide was not only institutional, but it was generational. Because in earlier institutions like Konas Technology University or Institute of Philosophy or Sociology and Law, people were in their 40s, in their 50s, and they are still reproducing Soviet sociology, how to say ideas, uh, what sociology should lo look like. But on the other hand, we had universities which were trying to bring absolutely different ideas and try to promote absolutely different discourse. What is sociology? It was uh, the main idea of universities were understood that they were trying to b uh, bring uh, global discourse, uh, theoretical discourses, how to say, to students and to show how it looks like. Uh, this divide was well reflected uh, in uh, publications. Of course, uh, we had uh, uh, two journals, one established in 1990, it was Philosophy and Sociology, it was established by Academy of Science, usually it were, they were printing uh, empirical research, and more theoretical oriented journal, Sociology, Thought and Action was established in 1997. And it was interesting that they were trying, to, uh, uh, sociologists were trying to uh, bring translations of classical text uh, to talk about postmodernism, to talk ab about more theoretical issues. And it was really very interesting for me as a student uh, in that time that when I was reading sociology, I mean, this and Weixmas, uh, sociology, thought and action, I, I was really enjoying readings, 
But when I was switching to philosophy, uh, philosophy and sociolo sociology, philosophy and sociology, I was really amazed why people are talking about national security, about intervention of the state into uh, ordinary life, about management, etc. It was really a huge surprise. Nowadays, nowadays uh, we have more uh, players in the field. Uh, more universities uh, are trying, uh, how to say, due the liberation of educational system started uh, to provide uh, uh, sociological study programs. Yeah, they started to publish a lot of journals. It's, I would say that we have uh, approximately six normal journals uh, published in Lithuania, sometimes in English, a few articles uh, which are still existing in Lithuania, and of course we have Sociological Society, which organizes annual conferences or annual co uh, congresses each autumn. Uh, this autumn uh, there will be also conference held in uh, Vilnius, and we invited uh, Michael uh, Burovo to give speech about public sociology. So that means that it is a field. Uh, how big is sociological community? I cannot say. It doesn't matter that I belong, how to say, to the board of Lucena Sociological Society. I don't know how many sociologists are, but uh, just to give idea uh, from different figures, just to imagine how sociology might be compared with other social sciences or uh, humanities. Uh, I just try to put uh, figures. Uh, it is as Number of publications uh, which were published during the last five years, you can see that sociologists uh, are somewhere in the middle. It is not a huge community. I have to remind that uh, in Lithuania, sociology is a very broad category where all residual sciences or disciplines usually are attached, and we have to share place with uh, human geography, uh, social work, uh, studies uh, of social policy, criminology, demographics, sometimes hybrid identities coming from uh, educational sciences, etc. It means that uh, uh, a community of sociologists are quite small, and uh, I'd like to say that uh, from this uh, diagram you can see that the biggest communities are those who are working in management and administration research and also in educational sciences, in uh, social sciences. Uh, reproductive behavior of sociologists, it's quite okay. It is like just number of PhD theses uh, uh, for already 25 years. It is quite stable. Uh, production, what we are doing, it is also just quite stable, I would say. It is just number of scholarly publications in sociology published during the last 18 years. Uh, why I'm showing those figures? Just to imagine how sociologists are working, how to say, and to show not, o not only ideas, but are very, how to say, captive. And usually you are talking with other people about ideas, you're going to discussions, but I'd just like to show the figures uh, which usually, how to say, are expressed like indicators of your ordinary behavior, like of your, your ordinary actions. Writing hard for Urbe Torbe for the world and for the city. Uh, of course, uh, a very interesting debate uh, in uh, social sciences and in, in humanities in Lithuania, uh, how much you are, pub you are publishing internationally. Uh, if you are trying to compare uh, publications published in national language and in English, uh, I always observe a very interesting trend that sociology is more close to humanities than to social sciences. It means that sociologists are producing knowledge, how to say, for local communities. They're trying to communicate a national language, how to say, but not to speak for big, huge, global, uh, global uh, audiences. Uh, sociological publications, how to say, books or chapters in books, uh, during the last also 18 years, you can see that the number of publications in English, book chapters, usually I say it is those are chapters in edited books. Uh, I don't like this genre. I don't like edited books but because I think that if you are writing a chapter in an edited book, it means you are digging the hole 
putting your publication and boring. Nobody is going to read books. <laughs> yeah. But here you can see how to say how idea of internet internationalization is getting on into our sociological community. Articles, peer review articles published. Also interesting figures say that uh, uh, since uh, 2012, we can see a trend that publications in national language is decreasing. Uh, why I'm worrying about it? Because usually when you are trying to produce sociology in your national language, you are playing with a style. You are playing with argument. You are trying how to see to bring uh, different concepts to play with different audiences, and it's, it's very important how to see for your national identity because you have to reproduce sociologists in your own country, in your own language, and it's very important. Uh, when we are looking at uh, the pattern of uh, international publications, I would say that from 2008, uh, from 2008, you can see that the pattern is quite stable. It's not changing, and it's very interesting. Uh, in this hall, we have uh, my PhD uh, supervisor, Zanonas Norkos. And once he said, uh, if you are going to be a teacher, it is usually, how to say, like a proverb uh, or a talk in the USA. If you're going to be a teacher or a preacher, you're going to, go going to teach other people how to live, there is a million. It's a very rational question. I can bring a figure and say, that is our million and we can teach and preach. Uh, in this uh, diagram, I tried to put uh, 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 figures uh, coming from the research council in Lucena, uh, which is, uh, how to say, the main institution providing uh, funds for different research projects, and this funding is performed on competitive base. Uh, from this uh, diagram, you can see that sociologists during the last 10 years managed to win a lot of projects in comparison with other sizes. The bubble, the size of the bubble are how to say number of projects. The X uh, axis are budget in uh, euros and the why access are success rate? It means how many publications you are, uh, how many applications you are writing, and how many are you winning? And you can say that sociolo sociology, in comparison with uh, other, oh, uh, sociology is here. Oh, uh, sorry, how to say? Possibly this computer, how to say, broke my <laughs> uh, uh, diagram. Sociology is here. It is a green bubble. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a green bubble. So how we can cheat? Uh, there are possible different explanations or different interpretations. If you are taking managerial point of view, you can say, you are successful, guys. You are, have necessary skills, how to put arguments, how to compete with others for funding. You are very hard to see rich man. You are, house, uh, you are agents of neoliberalism living in a comfort during the last 10 years after the global financial crisis. It is just a one possible discourse. On the other side, I would say that possibly sociology is more vulnerable tribe with a neoliberal university because they cannot secure funding for their research and they are pushed to apply funding from external sources. It is, uh, I, yeah, I'm very sorry for this graph, but I would say what uh, economy, economics are here, here are educational sciences, and if you remember the previous chart, educational sciences are the biggest community writing in Lucena. So it's, it's very important to just to think what is the pushing factors why you behaving in particular kind of mode. Also, there is another uh, possible uh, explanation that uh, sociologists who are winning a lot of projects uh, on competitive basis, they are 
adjusting to the dominant ideology or to the dominant discourse, or in other way, we can say that they are shaping this dominant discourse. What is the way which interpretation is, how to say, more valuable? It also depends on your stance, how you're going to treat this data, how you're going to work, and how you're considering your working condition. Are you feeling tensions or not? Uh, I will skip uh, uh, one slide, but, but I, and I'm going to another interesting topic, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, a Polish Lucena Research Funding Initiative, which were opened in 2018, Dina, uh, where Lucena Research Council is participating, and also uh, Narodowy Center Nauki. Narodowy Center Nauki, National Center of, of Sciences, who are also trying to perform or to open funding opportunities for different institutions in collaboration, international collaboration. And uh, it was very interesting that the uh, interest in this initiative, uh, which were opened uh, for the first time in 2018, uh, we got uh, 81 research application of social sciences. I would say it's quite huge. Uh, 14 applications were supplied by different sociological teams. Those are connections of different universities. Yeah, you can see the list who are participating. And strangely enough, from those 81 research applications, there were just four winners. It means success rate is 5%. When you are thinking about those 5%, you always can understand what is a psychological effect of funding scheme which might affect your understanding and your definition. 5% are good, 29 are not so good. Is it right or is it not? I would say no. 98% are still good. But how to say, idea that you are losing, it is like symbolical humiliation of your identity coming from different kind of fin financial understanding, from ideology, uh, which are, how to say, produced by uh, different uh, uh, institutions. Uh, 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 in this slide, uh, which I skipped, I tried to dissect the uh, uh, so-called collective mind of Lucanian sociologists. Uh, uh, they were providing applications. I uh, tried to visualize uh, different keywords just to find out how it, how it uh, looks, how people are thinking, uh, in what kind of categories. And uh, from my point of view, that uh, many categories, uh, they are reproducing all mythologies of sociology of underdogs and unprivileged social groups. You are taking care about gender, you are taking care about aging uh, people, you are taking care about child, but also you are trying to bring, not how to say you, but sociologists are trying to build idea of the policy. It means that idea of the policy is rationalization of patronizing system of administrative control. You are trying to give a state to the state to the administrative, how to say, administra administrators, uh, systems, how people might be managed and controlled. And of course, when you are trying to take this position, you are securing your symbolical power through paternalistic stance. You are taking care, you are in a more normative position, but from my point of view, you are always subordinating your academical freedom for this neoliberal uh, state. If I am looking at the same structure coming from the Diana, yeah. uh, for, uh, from the Diana, I would say that ideas uh, of international collaboration are more open and we, they are usually working not only with neoliberal state, how to say, they are not trying to sell a product for the state asking money, but people are interested in more social processes, what is going like a dynamics and state is somewhere left behind. It's quite interesting that uh, the only one project of sociologists were among four winners, and uh, from my point of view, it was also a good indicator how this neoliberalism has been working. Uh, it was a, a project, a collaboration between 
private institution. In Lusain, it is public policy and management institution. It is just like think tank, idea of the t think tank, house organization, which are trying to produce policy. And from the Polish side, it was SWPS University, it is a private university e of social sciences and humanities. Yeah. From my point of view, it, those are good indicators that Haurasi National Universities are losing the battle for resources and we have quite clear vision that a new generation we are, uh, we, are we, are we are trying to build a little bit different models of sociological research, of sociological organizations are taking their uh, chance. Uh, what is the future? Uh, I think that the future is more promising than how to say my <laughs> vision of sociology, but uh, we always have uh, uh, to think about limitations uh, and ideological illusions of those promises uh, about funding, about your possibilities, about oppo opportunities. And we have to always think what kind of role we are performing like ideological agents. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have a uh, next presentation, number four, by Zuzana Kusa, Sociology Without Successors, Sociological Institutions, Publications, and People in Slovakia. to be here and to be one of presenters and to learn also about uh, the state of art of sociology and uh, society also in our neighborhood neighbor countries or near neighbor countries so uh, I am working at Institute for Sociology of uh, Slovak Academy of Science and perhaps my view on situation of Slovak sociology uh, will be a bit different than the situation of colleagues who work at universities and uh, were much more uh, touched by reform of educational systems. So perhaps their knowledge of situation will be uh, more useful to, to you and perhaps more optimistic than that of mine. I will speak about institutional uh, developments, about uh, personal development, orientation of research and uh, consequence for uh, surviving uh, of sociology uh, in Slovakia. Uh, I, as we need to look at the world and life and also the life of sociology uh, from the bright side of it. So first I will always uh, try to look it uh, from this bright side or at the bright side of sociology. So if we compare years uh, 1990 in 2019, uh, we can, um, we can uh, find evidence of development of sociology uh, in Slovakia, especially institutional development. We have a much more department of sociology and uh, many uh, new departments, uh, new in comparison of 1990, uh, of social work and politology. We have still uh, uh, two training centers for PhD students, which are crucial for uh, reproduction of academic of soci sociology. We have one sociological journal more, 
but the first older one, Sociologia Slovak Sociological Review, is uh, indexed in International Social Index, and uh, so is a very demanding site of publication. Uh, Slovak Sociological Association, SSA, was a local organization in 1990. Uh, there was a uh, Czechoslovak Sociological Association uh, working in former Czechoslovakia, which was a member of uh, uh, International Sociological Association, uh, but it uh, operated only on the territory of uh, Czech, uh, Czech lands of Czechoslovakia. In the end of common state, our uh, uh, so Czech and Slovak sociology is commonly applied for membership in ISA uh, and no one wish to be the only successor. So we uh, enter the uh, International Sociological Association shoulder by shoulder in uh, friendly cooperation in 1993. Uh, the number of uh, private uh, uh, research institutes uh, grew also uh, uh, strikingly. There was uh, no uh, uh, social, uh, social research data archi archive in that time, in 1990. Now we have Slovak archive of social uh, data, which is ex ex accessible free of charge. Now, uh, also, the funding opportunities increased immensely, and we have one uh, academic uh, funding agency which, uh, which uh, funds a research projects uh, which are uh, based uh, only on uh, research interests uh, in uh, elementary or fundamental research. No, uh, pools or uh, from outside. So, uh, so very briefly about our um, two uh, strong, uh, strongest institutional infrastructure pillars, Journal of Sociolo uh, Sociologi uh, Sociologia and Slovak Archive of Social Data. It is uh, important perhaps to know that uh, Slovak Sociologia, Slovak uh, Sociological Review published two issues in English language and uh, publication in this journal is um, uh, of interest of many uh, sociologists and social t scientists from abroad. At present or in last ten years, uh, the about the half of all publications uh, in this journal were not from Slovak sociologists or Slovak political scientists, but from our colleague from Czech Republic and also from other countries. Uh, Sociologia has very demanding anonymous peer review procedures. Perhaps it is uh, also difficult to publish there for Slovak colleagues because the refuse rate is about 70%, so it is really uh, demanding uh, and strict to preserve uh, uh, scholarly standards. Now, uh, something from the dark side of uh, institutional life. It is a budget, uh, state budget from funding uh, research and education in general, uh, you can see that the percentage of the GDP in Slovakia is uh, very lo low, perhaps uh, a bit uh, similar to that of Poland. But the both uh, uh, budgetary uh, share uh, or percentage share are uh, almost uh, half of the European Union average. So the funding uh, of research and education is a general problem in uh, Slovakia and in some neighbor, uh, neighbor countries. And uh, uh, this problem uh, touched not only sociologists, but uh, also many other uh, research uh, disciplines. You can see uh, in red, uh, 
field, the number of sociologists at the Institute for Sociology, Slovak Academy of Science, that is my uh, institute, uh, how the number of uh, sociologists working in academic, in this academic institution dropped from 39 in 1990 to only 17 in uh, 2019. This uh, personal politics uh, uh, is also uh, motivated by the need to preserve wages in a sociological institute and academy of science on a somewhat comparative, uh, competitive uh, uh, level with the wages in a private institution and to have chance to, to uh, to hold the uh, sociologists in the academy. So the salaries uh, are um, average on the average level, but at the expense of uh, diminishing number of uh, colleagues and uh, following problems with uh, uh, forming a research team uh, around uh, some, uh, some topics. Uh, the next not very uh, uh, bright uh, information about institutional development uh, of sociology in Slovakia um, refer uh, first to the 90s where several uh, public research institutes affiliated to ministries uh, were cancelled. There were many uh, positions in uh, companies uh, for sociologists cancelled. Uh, the majority sociologist uh, worked as a, a firm, a company sociologist under the uh, communist regime. And uh, uh, during the economic reform, the companies first of all get, got rid of administration and so sociologists uh, were were on the floor <laughs> uh, among the administration. And uh, as a consequence, the uh, very strong uh, section of Slovak Sociological Association, sociology, section of sociology of work, uh, ceased to exist uh, in the 90s because nobody uh, worked there. There was also uh, internal brain drain uh, from sociology to social work and politology uh, departments uh, which uh, uh, really, uh, really um, develop uh, very intensively in this uh, period and also to private uh, sectors. And uh, this uh, internal brain drain in the 90s had its uh, uh, consequence uh, also for present uh, day. Uh, now, when we draw structural funds from European, uh, uh, from uh, European structural funds, um, we have a new uh, job opportunities for sociologists uh, in al analytic centers of, um, of ministries to make uh, public policy uh, more evidence-based, European Union promotes uh, uh, such uh, analytic centers, but that, uh, working in these centers uh, is um, uh, more or less uh, not publicly uh, visible, uh, and uh, the communication with the uh, sociologists working uh, in these analytic uh, centers uh, almost uh, doesn't exist and they uh, do not take part in, uh, for instance, sociological uh, association events uh, or do not publish in sociological journal. Uh, as I al uh, also already suggested by the data from Institute for Sociology, the problematic uh, part of Slovak Sociological Association is the number of people inside sociological institution. You can see uh, uh, the number of academic sociologists, uh, uh, which are uh, very low. Uh, 
um, there are uh, there is uh, important to add or fair to add that those who are scattered at uh, other social science departments are not uh, uh, lost uh, in that department. My two distinguished colleagues who participated, uh, participate in this Polish Sociological Congress are so-called scattered, but one is the director of the Institute of uh, uh, prognosis of Slovak Academy of Science, and one is very important and influence uh, scholars in sociological, uh, sociology of uh, the social inclusion. Both of them are very important, important figures in this uh, field. Uh, it is uh, Richard, uh, Richard Filczak and Daniel Škobla who are here. Thank you to say uh, this. Uh, um, there, uh, there are uh, common critical uh, uh, as, uh, words about the 90s uh, in Slovak sociology, and these critical words uh, concern the, uh, uh, the empiricist uh, nature of uh, uh, doing sociology in the 90s, which was uh, also um, strengthened by the idea that uh, the transformation situation in post-communist countries is uh, very unique, uh, uh, unique um, uh, historical situation, and the duty of sociologists is to collect the uh, as, uh, authentic data of this uh, very unique situation. And there was uh, no interest or understanding that, that this situation was not at all unique and uh, that uh, we could have learned uh, very much from uh, privatization and uh, reform processes in uh, uh, many uh, European uh, uh, so-called Western uh, democracy. And lack of this uh, theoretical knowledge um, uh, make Slovak uh, sociology prone to taking uh, interpretative frames uh, from other sciences, uh, especially from, from political sciences, but uh, very often from the think tank experts uh, uh, from, uh, uh, with neoliberal uh, orientation. Uh, despite uh, this, um, uh, neglect of sociology uh, theory and uh, uh, despite the pressure to be engaged in a new and new uh, research project to collect the money for the institute, there are some uh, sociologists who were able to very stubbornly uh, uh, follow uh, one research line and, uh, and study uh, and try to uh, to uh, put their research uh, uh, within the context of international sociology and learn from uh, uh, similar researches uh, in other countries. And so these are uh, colleagues who are now able to publish in international journals or international volumes uh, in, uh, this, uh, in uh, the first rank uh, a publishing house or also published individually like the, for instance, book of my uh, younger colleague uh, Miloslav Bahna, uh, uh, Cross-Border Care, uh, published in such a uh, publishing house. Mm. So we uh, already heard something about fragmentation of research, which is uh, in this uh, underpopulated sociology a bit uh, dangerous because we uh, are witnesses of dying of some uh, research uh, branches or is, uh, research program when the key personality of this research orientation died. Many um, Important sociologists in important fields are very uh, lonely figures in Slovakia, and uh, uh, their sociology or this branch sociology is really in risk when they are uh, going to uh, 
Leaf Academy. Sociology uh, is uh, and has not been very visible in Slovak public space, often because uh, uh, journalists call every uh, social scientist, analyst or expert and sociologists did not uh, insist on their sociological identity. Also, the uh, sociological identity uh, became uh, uh, not clear because many other social scientists like ethnologists, uh, political sciences, show similar knowledge, similar expertise, uh, also research uh, techniques and interpretation frames if they have uh, so, uh, majority of Slovak sociologists uh, uh, appear in public only reactively. No, uh, only few of us, uh, fortunately all we are here now, uh, publish, uh, publish their columns, uh, columns in uh, some newspapers. Uh, according to the uh, interest in a uh, sociology study, it is clear that uh, our discipline become, become visible and appealing to young people only in situation when uh, our colleague, Professor Iveta Radičová, was appointed Minister of, of Labour and then uh, Ministry, uh, the Prime Minister of the government. So they speak in a uh, um, 2010 it is uh, uh, the, the time when she uh, was in the head of uh, uh, Slovak Republic. And then uh, the uh, interest in study sociology uh, come down. So th there is also intervention of demographic trends that uh, um, touch also political sciences. You see in this blue frame that the political sciences are much more appealing to, uh, to public uh, and uh, uh, very sad uh, numbers are that from 2018 where only uh, less than 100 uh, Slovak uh, students uh, apply uh, for sociological study on the territory of all republic and uh, uh, only 35 were uh, enrolled in the study. There are sociologists who study, uh, or young people who study sociology in Czech Republic or uh, more mm, in the West, but there is uh, very rare uh, if somebody returns home so sociological institutions are as, uh, very uh, relatively well established in, uh, uh, and they are in demand of non-sociologists as it is uh, uh, evidence from publication in uh, the journal Soci uh, Sociologia. Uh, but sociological institutions uh, which are populated but, uh, by sociologists are not winners in scientometric uh, uh, assessment because we, uh, the problem is not, uh, not publishing in foreign, uh, foreign well-ranking uh, uh, journal. Uh, public profile of, soci of sociology is fuzzy and there is uh, declining uh, interest in sociological study. So, uh, there is a possibility that sociology uh, in Slovakia will survive, but as an institutional infrastructure which will be uh, maintained by people who uh, did, not, uh, do, did not study sociology. So we will survive, but they will be not us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too. Okay, so we are done with the presentations. I would like to say thank you to all the speakers. Thank you very much for your uh, insightful presentations. Uh, a wide range of uh, issues uh, has been covered. So we've heard about um, funding, publishing, historical issues, top issues, and many others. Um, we've got kind of uh, 
as I said, insightful um, presentation or, or analysis of the national sociologists, uh, sociologies, but at the same time, I think uh, all the sociologists, uh, together with the Polish one, seem to have uh, quite a lot uh, in common. I would say so much in common that sometimes uh, it's legitimate to say um, that our national sociologies turn out to be a part of a bigger system in which uh, we need to participate, uh, sometimes take part in a kind of rat race, sometimes struggle for existence, uh, sometimes to be competitors between us as scholars, sometimes between institutions as well. Um, that's my uh, short remark, but I would like to open up discussion now. Uh, so we are all looking forward to hearing your questions, comments, uh, doubts, or anything else. So please, the time is yours now. Okay. Okay, thank, thanks for some uh, uh, excellent presentations. I come from uh, Romania, uh, in fact, from the largest university, public university in Romania, Babish Boy University in Cluj. And uh, I am amazed to see the uh, extreme similarities between the uh, dynamics in, the, in other countries compared to developments in, uh, uh, in uh, Romania. It's in terms of the public visibility of sociology, it's very low. The number of pr practitioners here is rather low. Pressures coming from uh, all sides, uh, chronic uh, uh, underfunding and lack of uh, 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 resources. And my question would be that uh, it's obvious that regionally we are uh, uh, facing similar problems and it's clear that there are some common processes at play that bring uh, uh, all these countries in the region and bring sociology in these countries under uh, such severe uh, stress to the point that uh, uh, we witness a massive, uh, a massive deprofessionalization inside the, uh, the discipline. What happens in Romania and probably in your countries is we essentially survive because we teach human resources, not, uh, uh, not uh, sociology. Uh, what, which do you think are those processes that uh, have brought us here. And uh, beyond that, uh, do you think maybe that it's time to take a more anti-disciplinary stance in the sense that uh, we acknowledge that uh, the pressures brought about by uh, all the things associated with neoliberalism like uh, an emphasis on uh, efficiency, uh, management, increased productivity and so, uh, so on should be acknowledged as such as problems for the for the discipline, and maybe we should strive beyond the national framework to do something, to do something together, and to redefine this uh, uh, discipline along different lines. The end result might even be very radical, not having uh, uh, sociology or having something completely different that we term sociology in the end. Thanks. So, uh, if I understand uh, properly, because the uh, acoustic here is not so good as the, this <laughs> beauty of the uh, building. Uh, in uh, Slovakia, many sociologists uh, uh, continue their work in cooperation, for instance, with, ge uh, with the geographers or ethnologists, so they find uh, um, alliance uh, in uh, um, close disciplines, but in my view, uh, the sociological training, especially in uh, theoretical um, 
theoretical framework is uh, very important and cannot be uh, replaced by another discipline. For instance, uh, geography is uh, very uh, empiricist uh, in my view. Uh, and uh, uh, the lack of the theoretical framing uh, led to very uh, uh, superficial uh, analysis and uh, inability to, uh, to make a critical interpretation of the da da data in the 90s. So I think that the study of sociology and the sociological department are not uh, replaceable without uh, uh, bad cost. <laughs> And any of you would like to comment upon the question? Yes? Yep. If you have something to add. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the interdisciplinary point is very important now. And uh, actually, the policy is how we how we combine sociological knowledge and also technology. This is uh, the huge challenge of uh, um, this artificial intelligence and uh, the brain and uh, the science of Earth, whatever, and pollution, ecology, ecology, whatever. But um, uh, the, the problem is that sociology in this particular area could be supplementary. It's, uh, the idea is that it could be like supplementary to finding out the consequences, social uh, situations around the particular things. And, uh, but in this sense, there is a danger of sociology itself as a humanist project are in sort of danger. Uh, I'd like to make one comment on interdisciplinarity or multidisciplinarity. You can name one or another way. Uh, idea of interdisciplinary research and opening uh, boundaries of uh, different disciplinary fields is already, from my point of view, for 40 years going on, but somehow it's happening that those boundaries are still existing. Uh, there are two points. Uh, uh, one uh, is uh, why you need this interdisciplinarity. It is a huge question usually when we are talking, for, for example, with uh, natural sciences and you are saying, okay, we are doing sociological research, please join us, uh, please bring us uh, uh, different gadgets uh, or uh, statistical procedures, uh, models just to play with our data. They are saying, come on, you are trying, how to say, to exploit us. You are liking just how to say, you would like to enjoy our gadgets and our methods, but you are not trying how to, say, to bring our mind. You are asking us to do, a, how to say, dirty work, how to say, to making publications. There are a, a lot of resistance. On the other side, uh, it's happened f for me already for 10 years uh, uh, to be involved in uh, different expert panels when we are uh, evaluating uh, uh, projects, uh, ap applications for research projects. Uh, in Lucian Research Council, uh, in 2010, uh, 2012, there were decisions to organize different uh, stream of uh, projects which were called multidisciplinary. And the main problem for the experts were that they could not find arguments or criteria how to evaluate those, criteria, uh, those uh, uh, projects. They always were trying to push responsibility and they're saying, we don't know how this project will work. It is possibly how to say those from social sciences or those from natural sciences will say something. 
people from social scientists or natural sciences, they say, no, no, it's not our business. We are not taking responsibility. And it was really quite funny thing that people were pushing responsibility out from them and the Lusania Research Council decided to quit those streams, to stick to quite clear definitions of disciplinary fields. And of course, we, are, we cannot forget that we are working in very clear legislative environment that by the law you have clear division of division, a clear division of, so, of any scientific activity. So you always have to think not only about intentions coming from the sociological community or community of us scholars, but you always have to think about this legislative strains, how to say, framework uh, of uh, uh, rules of regulations, which usually are defining what you have to do and what you have to be. I'd like to, um, to stress uh, uh, a very serious thing. Mm. We have heard uh, from our Slovak colleagues that uh, in uh, Slovakia, they uh, are going to, um, to survive as a sociological uh, institute without people, without persons who are especially uh, trained and educated as sociologists. Uh, in Ukraine, we uh, see very, very uh, mm, big problem. Uh, we observe uh, that uh, a couple of re a couple of last years, uh, the interest of uh, young people uh, in sociology declined very much. And uh, uh, in Ukraine, about uh, 50, maybe uh, 60, maybe more universities propose. Uh, sociological uh, training, sociological educational programs, including not uh, universities, uh, but technical institutes, agricultural, and so on. Uh, they thought maybe that uh, sociology is a profession which could give uh, to young people more money, more prestige, more power, and so on. But <laughs> young people see that sociologists are not very rich uh, persons, that sociology is not very uh, serious uh, professional for um, enrichment, for uh, uh, successful uh, professional career. And in last year we see as uh, universities are not able to enroll uh, more or less uh, enough uh, quantity of uh, young people to, to, to study sociology. In our university, by the way, in our university, Kharkiv, Karazin University, and by the way, uh, Maxim Kowalewski, which has been mentioned uh, before, uh, is alumni of the university, our university. In our, our university was the first university uh, which opened uh, the sociological uh, education department in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, we see that we are not able to enroll students. And what is the way? Uh, I think this to combine sociology, pure sociology, in my opinion, uh, has no future in the modern world. Pure academic sociology is not perspective. And we uh, have to combine sociology with something other. Uh, in our case, we uh, had combined it with social uh, communications, with uh, public relations, uh, with uh, advertisement. And this works. Uh, we are not a lot of people who are trying to uh, be sociologists, but not pure sociologists, but uh, simultaneously, simultaneously uh, reclamist, uh, public relation uh, specialist, and so on. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have two more people willing to... Uh, yes. Uh, hello, I'm Viktor Mazec from Institute for Social Studies, University of Warsaw. Uh, you mentioned uh, some of successful examples of, let's say, individual strategies of overcoming the uh, institutional misery of the semi-peripheries yeah, of all our countries. 
And I wanted to, to ask you about uh, your reflections about, about these strategies. So I know some of, of the stories. I, I use various strategies as well to, to somehow get by in the global uh, world of academic production. But I also know that this requires a very particular steps and not every strategy is effective here. Yeah? We have to really take a very specific position uh, within, this, uh, within this structured global uh, academic production to, to be able to, uh, to be somehow attractive on the academic market. And sometimes uh, it's also connected with, let's say, delivering a raw material for the, for the uh, for instance, uh, a global production of knowledge, yeah, as uh, perhaps uh, peripheral countries usually do. So, so I wanted to ask you, how do you see, uh, for instance, your own uh, entanglements uh, in, the, in this matter, uh, in, in that matter, and how, how can you, for instance, reflect on, on these strategies which, we, which were taken by your colleagues, for instance, which you find somehow effective, uh, productive, but as well, of course, having their own price uh, in that matter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, question. I can uh, now uh, use my uh, PhD qualification biographic approach in sociology. <laughs> so, and uh, also observation, qualitative method. So two of my colleagues who are present at Polish Sociological C uh, Congress uh, uh, did the PhD study abroad and uh, perhaps made enough uh, uh, not only uh, personal contact, but uh, uh, got uh, many personal uh, challenging patterns of how sociological work should proceed, uh, what is important and what is the less important. And they also, they are keeping contact with their uh, former colleagues from PhD studies and new colleagues uh, from the sociological discipline they choose to uh, cho chose to um, to do research in uh, the next um, three persons who I mentioned in my uh, presentation uh, also uh, they made their PhD in Slovakia no one uh, girl made it in uh, Brno uh, but all they cho uh, chose their PhD topic uh, because of deep personal interest and kept this personal interest and uh, uh, selectively uh, chose uh, sociological conference and all scientific even uh, which are close to their interests so they do not like to go to this general sociological gathering but keep this special branch uh, focused uh, uh, meeting and uh, they are very uh, also strongly uh, engaged or in touch with their uh, international scientific colleagues and so they swim in sci international scientific <laughs> sea <laughs> with them. Uh, all of them uh, study empirically Slovak topics. Uh, for instance, uh, not only Slovak, because one uh, of them studied the migration uh, of Slovak abroad, so it also concerned these receiving countries. But all them, uh, of them are theoretical, um, uh, well, uh, well, how to say, uh, uh, very, very well uh, developed. <laughs> And so they are able to speak about more general problems and uh, Slovak data, Slovak situation is one of the, the example of uh, general tendency or general sociological uh, problems. So uh, 
this is important that they are really theoret theoretical high and able to combine several theoretical approaches. So, for instance, test the relevance of sociological approach to the selective problems, and really it needs a different type of engagement in and study of sociology, not only collecting data, because data about Slovakia are really not interesting without uh, a strong theoretical interpretative uh, frames. So. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our time is slowly coming to an end, but I think we have two more people uh, willing to ask the question. Uh, but my request would be to make the question relatively short, and so should be the answer, okay? Yes, thank you very much, Isabella Grabowska, SWPS University of Social Sciences and Humanities. Thank you for this lively panel, and I really liked especially Ukrainian and Russian presentations because they show that, they, they, that we, have, we are dealing with societies which are true life laboratories. And my question here is about the long tradition in sociology of longitudinal studies. Do you conduct in such circumstances of dynamically changing societies longitudinal studies? Is it the tradition, is it hold there in your countries, both, both in Russia and in Ukraine. Either quantitative or now there are new approaches to qualitative uh, longitudinal studies. That's one question. Another question, I think I was called to the board by our Lithuanian contributor, and luckily for you, I am 5% happy PI of DINA-1 research program. And I don't think that the comment of yours was fair saying that non-public universities or non-public participants of the competitions take money from public universities. Please look at our scientific performance. Top, A plus A across the university. Our partner in Lithuania, which is of course Policy Institute, is also very, very qualified. And we do our taxpayers to the budget which DINA program was created. So I know that you teased uh, the audience with this argument, and I really appreciate your talk, but I don't think it was a fair argument. Thank you very much. I, I will take the floor. Uh, that is my argument. Of course, we are getting into ideological battle. You are representing one ideology, I am representing another ideology. But the main idea, it is just showing, I would say, figures, it's to send a quite clear message that organizational structures which are working, I would say, and in which we are, how to say, imposed to work uh, or, um, or framework uh, ideological in which we are working, sometimes it might be damaging. And when you are winners, you always how to say drinking champagne. If you are losers, we are always crying and complaining. But who is better, you or me? I always say, both of us are quite good enough, but there are not enough money or funding coming from the state. It means, how to say, we are neglected, like a community of sociologists, of social sciences. That is the idea. Not to say that, how to say, we are uh, jealous that you won and we lost. No. It is just idea that we have to switch our uh, focus from competition between us to those who are organizing such kind of competitions. And we have to make a criticism of the state, but not of criticism of how to say a, a small institutions or uh, those who are organizing funding. That was my, my, my idea. Uh, I always thinking that any idea which is going for competitive funding, it's always worse to be funded, despite the fact how it's bizarre, how it's weird, etc. because usually you are belonging to a particular kind of community which is producing 
those ideas in which uh, they uh, believe. I strongly believe that uh, the field uh, of higher education and research is, will go a uh, very rapid transformation in the next five years, that a lot of mo uh, smaller institutions will be the most important, important players within the field in comparison with all universities. That is. Uh, it's 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 not only the quality of science. Uh, just uh, just argument one uh, just uh, one more argument. It is not not only the quality of science. Uh, of course, you can say that uh, uh, peer panel or review panel are corrupted, are supported, or neutral, are objective or very subjective, etc. Usually, I would like to say that universities. For example, from uh, teams who are going for competitive funding, universities are demanding, for example, to bring 30% of overhead expenses from each project. When we are talking about private institutions, private institutions cannot, uh, how to say, uh, they are playing with a little bit different scheme how they can distribute those money within an institution. And it is really a serious problem that it is not criticism of private universities or think tanks or those who are coming. It is just idea of criticism of the state. Okay, let's stick to the first question. Me, yeah. you could. Uh, as far as I understood, because it's bad acoustic here, you are interested in what is in, in tradition. Uh, I mean, the Russian sociology pre-revolution. Yeah, the problem is uh, that we have kind of old generation sociologists who did this work, and I mean, there are several of them, very few. There is also, there is a project now called sort of uh, a, a Russian sociology of pre-revolutionary and post-revolutionary time. The, the, I, I mean, th th there is an idea, but it's difficult to, uh, uh, I mean, there are very, very few people who may do this properly, and young generation is not really a young scholar. There are some young scholars, so this is a problem of specialists, and there are very limited. This is very, very specific work, uh, you know, historiography, this is really, really, um, you know, very specific and not many people do, but the project exists, yes. Hmm? yes. Uh, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, but I, mm, I'm not sure that I understood your question uh, uh, properly. Uh, so uh, if you won't mind, I am ready uh, to meet you <laughs> just in a couple of minutes. And if you clarify your question, I'll try to answer. <laughs> And let me, uh, as a, a small compensation, uh, thanks, f uh, thanks a lot for uh, high estimation of our uh, uh, presentations. And let me, for, uh, as a, a small compensation for this not uh, full answer, uh, to give you this book in which you can find some very interesting materials about Ukrainian sociology uh, in modern time. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, uh, we need to finish uh, our discussion. Our time is up. So I'd like once again to say thank you to all the speakers and our guests for coming and sharing your knowledge and all of you who wanted to contribute to our uh, discussion. As I said, uh, soon, very soon, we are starting the, uh, the walk uh, around the main building guided by the rectors. So I think we'll start just in a minute. Thank you very much.